All right, guys, back on the construction manager project today. Um, I just wanted to quickly add in posts, so the ability to start a topic and then comment on that topic. So quickly give you a look at what that's going to look like. So inside of our project view, we now are gonna add this little post section here. You can add a post. When you add the post, we'll have this view. Who created the post, how long ago, some text. You can drop in PDFs, you can drop in images. We'll use the tricks editor from straight from Rails. So it does rich text for us automatically. It takes three seconds to implement. Um, and then here people can just comment on it. Hey there, create a comment and away you go. All right, so let's dive in. Also, if you haven't seen all the others, jump on. This is a long series and I'm, I've built a project from start to finish. So if you haven't watched episode one, jump in from there and you can follow all the way through. It's a real world problem. It's a real project. I'm actually gonna use it building in public. Let's go. All right, so what we have at the moment is the project screen has had a little refresh facelift, which looks pretty cool. Jump into a project and then here we have our sub projects. But what we wanna do now, we've got our documents, we've got our quotes, invoices and the clients. And we're gonna add a little thing here for posts. So these are like random conversations that you might have between a bunch of people. So um, in, in this instance, we're gonna be discussing uh, off-grid power solutions. So we can, we can dump links in, we can you know, comment and then create like a thread. Um, of a discussion. Another instance of this was the other day we were discussing secondary road access. So we just wanted to basically keep track of what was said and what was agreed. So let's move on. Okay, so the first things first is we're going to go Rails G model post. I'm gonna call it a post. Um, and that, when we create that, we're gonna just run that there and it should do our little migration. Um, and then from here we can go into our migration folder, this posts. And then what I want here, the main thing is that it belongs to a project. Um, it has a title. It has text, which is the description. Um, and then also it doesn't have an image. I think for now that's probably all we need. Another thing we want to probably have a look at is, let's see if we use um, the the built-in uh, Rails tool for actually creating um, rich text um, posts. So let's have a look at that. So the name was slipping me there, but it's called Action Text. So Action Text is basically a rich text editor that allows us very simple here to have rich text content. So content rich text. Um, so we'll need to have a model. So we just need to look at what that looks like and then we'll make sure that we use the rich text rather than actually what I was doing here is the description, which isn't quite right. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go Rails D model, which to delete the model. And then we'll go Rails G model again, post. And then we want to have content rich text. So that's in here. All right, let's see what that does. Okay, so now what it's done for us is here in the create posts. Ah, oh, it's done nothing extra. So that's could be that's probably wrong. Okay, so that's interesting. So the actual content is not stored on the model itself. If we look at the oh, sorry, on the table itself, if you still look at the models, it's added this has rich text content here. Okay. So what we want to do then is in our migration, we just want to add the title because the, the body will be stored elsewhere, but we also want to add in the belongs to project and also the t.string title, yeah? And then the content will be handled by action text. So I haven't used this before, but to install it, we just need to run rails action text install, okay? So let's jump into our terminal again and run rails action text install. So it's grabbing action text tricks. So the tricks is the editor's name. And then, so what's it done? So it's added something to our application JS. So if we jump into that, here we go. You can see that it's added tricks and Rails action text. What else has it done? It's done, it's added the style sheets for action text. So if we go to asset style sheets action text, it's added this all in there for us. It's done 
it's updated to Tailwind. So it's also importing this now, which I reckon we can probably move this to the top here. I mean, it's a pending, so we can just do it here. Okay, so we add that to Tailwind. It's created a view for active storage blobs. So if we go views, active storage blob, so this is an attachment, it's what an attachment looks like. It's created a new layout for action text content. So if we go and have a look at our views, layouts, action text contents, so that shows us what it's going to render. It's going to render basically wrap everything in a tricks content div. And then it's ensuring that's going to be there. It's checking the gem file and then it's doing the migrations. So let's have a look at what it's done for the migrations as well. So we go into our DB migrate. We now have our posts and then we also have create action text tables. All right. So this is similar to how we did active storage. Um, here we're going to have a new special table called action text rich text and then it it goes it references a record so it's polymorphic so a post will have these rich texts it has name body timestamps and it's indexing all right and then a bit of stuff here with the primary and foreign keys all right i think that's good so let's run that migration now so we're going to go rails db migrate Let's see what happens. So we created posts and we created action text tables. Okay, excellent. And then finally, when we want to render in our form, when we're creating our new post, we'll just have this rich text area content. And that's it. Very simple. All right, so let's give that a spin. So before we do that, actually, let's just wire up this post model. So we got this has rich text. Um, content, but also what we also want to add here is belongs to. Ah, uh, we probably should have had user in there too, so we can redo that migration. Um, belongs to project, and it's also going to belong to a user. And it has rich text content, yeah. So maybe we'll put that up the top there and then chuck that there, and then we're going to be um, validate the title as well. All right. Yep, we got all that. Um, let's just roll back. Uh, we can do a Rails re, uh, DB redo. So let's go T belongs to project, T belongs to user. Okay, so then we can just pull out Rails DB migrate redo. I believe that's it. So it drops it and then puts it back in. And now we should have that there so let's have a look we've got our post table we've got project id what why haven't you not added that okay so redo just runs the last migration so we actually need to do two backs um i wonder if there's a command for that so i just found here we got this command so we'll probably just pass in the exact version we want to do so it's redo version and then we just need to grab that from here which is the this date stamp and if we just swap the version out here, we'll revert that one and then migrate it again. Now we got our user ID. Excellent. All right, good. So the next thing we need is we actually need the scaffolding for being able to create a post. So we're going to run Rails G scaffold controller, and then we're just going to say for post. Run that. Now we've got all our views that we need. So if we jump, let's run our server again. So it's, um, where are you, bin dev? Excellent. Okay, we're back on. So if we want to run, so if we look here, so we should have posts slash new. All right, so here's our basic thing. So we got to do what we've been doing with all the other views is setting up that what that looks like in the um, edit new. So we're going to just grab what was the latest thing we did? Probably the documents, edit a new. So let's just do this. We're going to say edit post. And this is a posts there. Okay. And then we're going to grab this and then we're going to use it in the same kind of thing here. And this is new post. All right. So we should now have a nice looking post form. There we go. And now we're onto our form. 
All right. So we're going to look at the doc. So this is the documents form. We need to do the posts form. All right. So we'll grab all this, copy it, paste it in here. Um, and then we're not going to use the model document. We're going to use the model f um, post. Okay. So we've got the post. We've got a title. We don't need these, this piece. Um, this needs to be, say, post, because the post will have a project ID. All the params go back. All right, let's see if that works. Nope, project path for nil. Okay, that's because we're not passing through. We don't have project ID here. So let's just see what was our project ID is one. So we just pass that through here. Okay, we also need to make sure that we're actually in the controller. We are setting that. So when we go new post, we want to say post dot project ID is equal to params project ID. We don't need the if statement there. Sweet, that's that. And then we also want to just down here, we want to permit our params. So we want to go project ID here. We can pass through title. Um, we can also pass through, what is that called? Is it called, let's look at this um, rich text content all right so we need to be able to pass that through i'm imagining that's how we're working let's see so let's go back here bang there we go we've got our title of our post let me just make that a little bit smaller um, and now what we can do is we can drop in another field with content okay so inside of our form we're going to grab this field and this will be a field for content and then this has a rich text area content. Let's see what that looks like. Cool. So we need to obviously fix something here because this doesn't look 100%. But if we, so we can now bold, italic, strike through, do all the things. It's a rich text area, which is great. So that makes it really easy. So now we can like paste links in here. And it's auto growing, so that's really cool. It can attach files, so that's interesting as well. And we've got undo, we've got undo, redo. That's really cool. So it's all built in. Look at that. In, I've done videos on uh, rich text editors before, but nothing that fast. So that's really cool. So I, I'm sure there's a default styling we can grab for this as well. Sweet, so um, we have rich text uh, already and ready to go. So this will just be um, secondary, let's call it secondary road location. And then we can just say, hey team, uh, what do you think about these locations? All right, create that. User must exist, that's fine, we've seen this before. So we just have to make sure when we create here, we go, Post dot user is equal to current user. There we go, created successfully. Let's see what it's done in inside of here. So if we have a look at our active store uh, action text rich text, here we go. So you can see what it's done here. It's created a new name content because that's referencing what we've called the field. That's the parent that owns it, and this is the body. Okay. Easy as that. So it's wrapped it in the div. And then we can render that out really easily by just by calling message.content and it's going to create a sanitized version. So that's real cool. All right. Let's see how we can style those buttons. All right. So to fix this, I think it's a tailwind problem. But all I did was config, add this. So inside of app assets config manifest, we add this link to action text CSS. And then in the application HTML EIB in the views layouts here, we just added this. Okay. And then what I did is I removed it from the Tailwind file, which probably makes more sense anyway for maintainability. If you were going to rip out Tailwind, you just delete this file. Then meanwhile, you're deleting your tricks or your action text stuff. So now we are loading this file in here and we are putting the action text style sheet here and we end up having our styled little field cool so you can see when it's bold you lights up now you are free to edit and style these however you please 
which I probably would do just because this looks a little bit old school compared to our app. But to begin, it seems really nice and it works really easily. So like if we chuck in like a little ick picture here um, of a cute stuffy, chuck that in, boom. Picture in line, it's got a little caption which you can do. Here is some more. Yeah, we update that, bang. All right, now if we edit it, there it is. That's actually so cool, so easy. And then if we just refresh here, what does it look like? So inside of our post, we now have this all formatted. You can see it's just chucking the strong tag. What do you think? And then it's, it's got this action text attachment right here. That's it ending there. So this is really interesting how it's working. So let's have a look. It's interesting for me at least. If we go here, it's got the, the ID of the file. It's got the content type, it's got the URL. File name, file size, width, height, presentation, and then it's finishing it there. So this looks like a little custom web component. Hey, what are you up to, mate? Um, so we can see here, so it's pointing towards our active storage blob redirect, and then it's getting the ID and telling it, doing it all the stuff, presentation gallery, that's really cool. Yeah, so that's it. So that's, I mean, that's as easy as it is to actually edit the post. Now, what we wanna do is we wanna probably have the posts index inside of the actual project. So now that we've got this post, this is all editable and you can just delete it like that. That's cool. Just remove it, undo. That's really cool. You get all that stuff for free. Now you can go back. So we now wanna show the posts here, right? We wanna show the title of the post and then we can list them all out. So let's add that piece. Okay, so to do that, we're gonna jump into our projects here and we've been creating partials for these things. So we'll do the same. So we're gonna create a project posts.html.erb. So let's use the documents one. And we're gonna just paste that in. So this will just say posts, add post, new post path. And we're gonna pass the project ID through so we get that. And then this will be project.posts. And then here, same thing. And anywhere we're referencing document, we're just gonna say post. So it'll be post.title. And now we're not gonna to link to the blob path. What we're gonna do here is gonna be the post path and it'll be post we'll just pass that in we don't need this disposition piece all right so it's pretty simple just the title cool let me just check that's all good and then what we do need to make is this reference on the project in the model to say that it has many posts so we'll go into the project and now this is the same thing has many but it's polymorphic so we have to say has many posts and it's going to be as um, what's it called in th the thing it's called I'm trying to use my brain as record I believe as record so let's have a look in the DB record type record ID so that's a polymorphic join there all right, so it has many posts. And the, and the benefit of the poly polymorphic join, again, just to iterate over it, is that we don't have to create project posts. And then every time we want like a create a join table, we can just use the polymorphic join, which just means less tables to maintain. And I like to have these alphabetical. So it has many posts as record, all right? We've set up this. Now let's go to the main project. So this is the master project. And we want to add in above documents, we're going to have posts. And we're passing in the project through as a partial. Now let's see if that works. No uh, column post. Sorry, it's not polymorphic. That's the active storage piece. Let me fix that. So po a project has many posts, it's just standard. It is a reference straight on the post. If I, I'm looking at the wrong thing. So if I look at posts here, it has a project ID. So just straight through, okay? That was just a mistake on my side. Okay, 
There we go. So here we've got a post and it's a secondary road location. All right. So what we can probably do here eventually is also pull out the comments. So what I'll say is, so we have this comment model and it belongs to a referral polymorphic true. So we're going to do this here. This is where we're going to have, we're going to say, has many comments as record, right? That's going to work. Um, dependent destroy, yep. So when we delete the post, we want the comments to go as well. All right. Now, when we click this guy, we need to create a show view here now, okay? So we need to actually build what it looks like when we're busy talking about a specific thing. So it won't be like the edit screen, but this will be more like we need to create a view now where we actually show the post, the title, and then the content, and then the comments underneath. So let's have a look at what that could look like. So the first thing I think we should add is this header piece. So we'll add in similar to like when we're in a space, we'll have like, maybe, I mean, this could be the title of the post, and then this is where it belongs. And then underneath it here, we can have the actual content. And then below that, we need to do similar to how we've done with kitchen. We need to have these comments, the ability to comment here. Okay, so let's give that a try. And realistically, what I also would like probably like to do is update the comments so that we can actually have rich text here. So when you leave a comment, you can do, you know, links and things like that. So it just makes it easier to um, navigate. Inside of posts, we're, gonna, we're now interested in this show route here. And I think that's going to look similar to this project space show route. So it's a project space here. I think this has the title. All right, so we'll grab this. I'm going to just put it at the top here. And this will be post. So we get that. And then this will be linked to post title. And then this is post project. So the title will link to there. And then we're going to say post dot project parent project like that. All right. And this is assuming we're inside. And then so here we're going to have edit edit, duplicate, delete. Let's see, can we comment these? Nah, the comments don't work well. Um, clear this out. So what do we have? Edit, so this is edit post path. So everywhere project space, we can just change this to post. Edit post path, we just pass in the post. Post duplicate, you won't do really. And then this will delete here. All right, so let's see if that works. If we look at our show route now for our posts, so it'll be posts slash one. So we don't have parent project dot title. All right. So really what we're going to just do here then is just link straight to the project title. So we don't actually need to know that. That's fine. And then we just need to fix this. And this, okay. So here we got secondary road location, and this is the project that that post is in. Okay. So we click, and then we can go back. All right. And then we click here. We can edit here. Sweet. And that just takes us back to the project. All right. So that's good. That's good. Um, now let's see what we can do here. So now I think what we'll do is we'll probably create another one of these boxes and we'll just render the content inside of that. So let's have a look at what that looks like. So that will be for us probably in this post partial. I reckon we can do it. And then we want to use uh, a screen, uh, something to hold it all into. So let's see what have we done here in the other ones. So we can just grab the spaces. So if we look at the projects too, which is the um, sub project, sub project here, we should have the spaces. So 
that's the project space is projects project spaces it's this piece all right so we're going to grab this and then underneath here what we're going to do is we're going to clear out all of this and we're going to clear out this and this will just be called we actually don't even need the header so i'm just going to write um, body here for now and then let's go back and have a look right so that's what we got now and then what we're going to just do here is we're going to render post dot content i believe now that should be the sanitized content let's have a look so to render yep we just render it straight like that okay let's see what that happens there we go what do you reckon of that cute puppy let's do that thing um, so there we go. So we got this now. So now if we edit this post, there's our post. There we go. It's updated. It's got this little thing and it's got an adorable puppy. Okay, that's looking cool. Um, what's this? That's a code block and a link. So if we wanted a link to Basecamp, we can do that link save now that's a link that's really cool awesome so that's what it's going to look like so this is basically where you can get to lay out say what you need to say and then underneath we'll have comments so we have comments now currently if we jump into this kitchen we got this kind of section so i'm going to copy that um, so that's a post comments. So I'll create a partial for that. Let's just see how we've done it here. So it's inside of project items, project item, and then how are we doing the comments the down here? So I'm gonna grab this. So it uses the comments form and it uses the comments partial. Okay, so let's go into the post. So the content comes here and then I think we'll just chuck it straight there and this will be post. So we use this ID so that we can inject them. So we're going to go post comments and this is post.comments.order and then we're going to do comment and this is post.comments.size and the record is the post. Okay, I think that's all right. So if we go back, refresh. All right, here we go. We've got our comments. So I don't like that we got this going on here. So there's built-in padding, which we can get rid of, which is this. There we go. We just need to give it some gap. So we can just do that here. We can, I mean, I wonder, That's fine. Yeah, we can just add a uh, margin top here. So MT4, or even eight, and up, four, let's see what that looks like. So it's not there. Oh, yeah, there's a gap. Let's just see why that's not rendering properly. So it just looks like we need a padding here, which is with a border T. So we just need PT here, PT4. And that'll give us a little bit of gap there. All right, so now we're gonna need a controller, I believe is what we needed on here last time. A little, let's just see, did we need that? Project item comments. So that's, that's right, when we create a comment in a controller, you can see here we've got a turbo stream of pen. So what it's going to look for is the record type, the record ID comments, and then it's just going to push it in. So that's all we have to do there. But now we just, so we've provided, um, not on project item, we're on a post. So we've got post, post ID comments, and it's going to push it into here. So that's awesome. And it's going to give it a little margin top. Okay, so let's give that a go. Let's see if that even works. Test. There we go, got it. 
The only thing I need to fix there is a little JavaScript so that we can pick that up. But now we already have um, comments. All right, we don't even have to do anything. That's ready to go. So now you can go create this. Hello, what do you think? Um, and I would, I mean, that's it. That's pretty much all we need. I wonder, I wonder if we can even, I want to try something out here. I want to see if you can just chuck in. That's sorry, puppy, you got to go. But let's do a little bit more realistic. Let's see if we're going to chuck in a PDF. Um, let's see if we can find a PDF. Boom, update. Holy moly. So that's actually pulled in. So what we're going to do is we're going to try adding a PDF now and we're going to just chuck in one of these proposed water um, connection. All right, and then we're going to update that. And look at that, it's actually read the PDF and rendered it out in that time. That was amazing. And now we have the text that the person wrote, a picture, here's some more, and then the people can comment on it. So that, I think this is really cool, creates a little dis discussion you can start having. And then what I think what we'll do here is we'll put the number of comments. So we can go here and we can say comments, how many comments it has had. Because then we can say, oh, there's, there's a bit of just activity happening there. So we need to do that inside of our project. It's going to be inside of project posts. And here we're going to just add another header heading and this will be comments right um width we're going to remove that actually want to remove that too um text left comments and then here what we're going to say is post.comments. so so post.comments.count and we're going to pluralize there it is Right, so we're going to say that, and it'll be post dot comments count, and it'll be comment. Right, let's see what that looks like. Comment two comments. We change it to capitalized. Sweet, and then we're going to just say here. I'm going to think we're going to text right. All right, we need to do the same thing here. Don't want font medium, it's not a title. Boom. Secondary road, two comments. All right, so now we can start creating our, creating our posts and we can chuck all the stuff we need to do. I, what I do want to say here, and like improvement I will add later, is who did it, like who actually created this post. Um, and possibly move this title just down. I mean, it does make sense there because it's the heading of the thing. Um, but we probably just want to say like, Ken posted this and then also the date that was it was done. Okay, so above in the show file here, I'm going to try, we're going to add another, I wonder, I wonder if we need even need this like flex. I wonder, I wonder if we can get rid of this. Let's pop that there. Let's see what happens. Okay, so that's rendering. It looks like a new line there. Let's just see. There is no new line there. So that's okay. So that's because of this guy. But now what I want to do here is I actually want to do a border bottom. So border um, bottom of this. There we go. You can see it rendering there. The gaps what's creating that space. But now what we want to do is let's go to the comment partial and just copy oh, it's got this whole user color that's a cool little helper that we need because really what i wanted to do was grab the i wonder if we can just do this we can go let's just grab this piece and stick it in there and this will be post dot user dot first name last name and this is post I'll create it at right so let's see what that looks like I mean that works it's not that's not 
very good. But let's go PB. Let's just see here. So we need padding bottom on this guy of four. All right, so build a name, posted it. We can play with that as well. Let's go as text medium. Yeah. So this works for me for now. It obviously doesn't have this little picture, which I almost feel like we should pull this out. Um, this user color, this whole thing here into an avatar. So we'll turn, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to extract this little thing, this piece, whole piece here into a little partial. So we can reuse this. So let's let's do that. Let's give it a spin. So what I'm going to do is inside of users, I'm going to create a new partial. I'm going to call it user avatar. Dot html dot eib. Right, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this, punch that into there. Now the user letter will not be comment dot user. It'll be user dot email dot first, and then that's all cool. And then what we're going to do is we're going to render this thing. Okay. That's the partial. So think of these are like react components here. Yeah? So whenever you need to reuse a piece, pull it out into a partial where it belongs and then go from there. So what we're going to do now is this partial is going to expect the user. Okay. So let's try it with comments. So let's go here and now we're going to render a partial users slash user avatar and we're going to pass in locals and the user object here will be comment.user okay and that's how we're going to render the partial now we should see a double up realistically yep so it's, it's rendering exactly the same so if we now go back into the main dwelling we look at kitchen you can see it's all rendering Right, but the only problem is it looks like the colors are not rendering. So we have to look at why that is so. Because they should be different. Um, so, okay, so that's the comment user email first. It could be just logic problem there. So now we can get rid of this. Right, and we can also get rid of this. Now we're just rendering a partial. So we've now refactored comments. To just look like that so that's cool now if we go back to our project and go into here that's working but now we can chuck that in, in here so if we go grab this and then next to how's this all rendered goes above that so it's in a flex so that's in the column flex probably here and this will now not be the comment user, it'll be the post user. Okay, that's all right, but we just got the wrong thing. So we get rid of the justify between there. We want items center on that. Yep, that's looking good. And then we want a little gap here. So we can say gap two possibly between the items there we go so now we're reusing this partial boom done looks like it may be even a four down there let's just make it a gap four that looks pretty much in line yep so we have b now that will match whenever they have their name there and that's who created it 38 minutes ago epic awesome okay that's it that's that's all I wanted to do. So now we can we can now create posts. We can I'm sure we can delete them. Let me go create a new one. I don't want to lose that one. Delete me. Create. That's the show route now. We can hit delete. We're gonna have to fix something before I hit that button. I know we're gonna have to fix something in the controller. So once we delete to not the post URL, but the project URL for the post.project ID. All right, so let's give that a spin. 
delete. Yes, done. It's gone. That simple. All right. Now we have posts, documents, quotes, invoices. All right. And what does this look like? Small. That looks all right. Awesome. Love it. All right, guys. Catch you on the next one.